Hello and welcome to this episode of Stamps Aren't Cool, the podcast that states its case in its title and then sets about proving it. My name is Jared. I'm a comedian and I happen to write a stamp collecting blog called Punk Philatelist and joining me as always is my non-collector wife, Celeste. How's it going? Well, I'm going pretty well and can I say your fringe is looking really great tonight. That's all this is about. This this is not this doesn't happen you know, first thing in the morning. This takes some time and I just think that people should have the chance to appreciate my hard work. And of course, if you're listening, you're just going to have to imagine it. But basically, Celeste looks like the little logo that you might have seen on your on your podcast machine. Think Jane Birkin. Yep. He has no idea who that yeah. is. And I, I kind of, I associate her with a handbag, but I didn't realise there was a fringe thing as well. See, I'm learning things in this podcast too. But we have some uh, some stamps to discuss this week. We're going to look at some recent issues. I'm going to put the deep nerd stuff away if I can. I think I I think I regret going deep nerd in episode two. I hope I didn't scare too many people off. No, no, we're going to try and keep it light and entertaining. That's the main word. That's right. If you're watching the YouTube version of this podcast, you may be wondering something that I'm wondering, which is what is hanging on the wall behind us, Celeste? Well... We've had an empty hook for the last two uh, YouTube videos and today I just felt like that was ugly and that an oven mitt might be better than just an empty hook. But the reason it's usually an empty hook is because we have a clock usually sitting there and we chop the hell out of this uh, podcast. <laughs> yeah, we do. <laughs> and uh, we didn't want you to notice, but just for a moment of honesty... Yeah, that's why there's an oven mitt. You'd be listening to it going, well, that that clock's ticking, but it keeps missing seconds. (laughs) What's going on? Jared, what are we talking about this week? Well, this week I thought I'd take you through some of the stuff that's been happening in the UK in the connection with the fact that, and I I hope you've heard the news and I'm not breaking it to you, the Queen died. I had heard. Yeah, the Queen passed away last year. And so we have a new king. Right. And, of course, that's going to affect your stamps if you're the kind of country that retains a monarchy and puts your king or queen on your stamps. You know when you think of a British stamp? Yes. And you think of the queen's head on a stamp? Yes. They're called Machen stamps. Most of us, I think, can visualise if you're not, if you can't see it right now, what that looks like. It's supposedly, like, the most reprinted work of art in history because they've printed so many hundreds of millions of these stamps. So it's the Machen head, and it's called that because Arnold Machen was the guy who sculpted the clay bust, which is which had a photo taken of it, and that's the photo that became the stamp design. Right. So uh, Machen heads had to go, but they didn't replace them right away. They weren't going to sort of pull them all out of the shops and immediately replace them with Charles's head. They, for, they just thought they'd, first of all, just keep selling them for as long as they're around. And... Um, it, but it marks a significant milestone for a lot of British collectors because if you're a collector who is what we might call a completist, you might be thinking, I want to have every stamp that came out during the reign of Queen Elizabeth II. So when the Queen dies, you're thinking, okay, I can wrap up my collection. What they'll be waiting for is just the last few stamps to come out that have the, the Queen's little silhouette. I don't know if you know this, but... Uh, when we when you look at a British stamp that's not the the Machen head that we're talking about, when you look at any other stamps, they also have a little silhouette of the Queen's head up in the corner. So any as long British as, stamp on British stamps, yes. yeah. And so as long as those little silhouettes appear in the corner of the stamps, then they're still considered part of the the Queen Elizabeth II era. So this is exciting to a lot of stamp collectors because recently. The Royal Mail, the UK Postal Service, has been churning out stamps that are of questionable value, I think, to the British population. A lot of collectors have become very cynical at how much how much they're expected to hand over to pay for stamps that they don't think are particularly relevant to the nation anymore. And word on the street is there are a whole lot of collectors who want to get out. They are waiting for these Elizabethan stamps to finish up and then they are going to end collecting British stamps, which is sad. But to start with, I thought what I'd do is, let me let me pause for a moment while I reach around and pull out my uh, collection of British stamps. What I've got is the vast majority, if not all, of the Elizabethan uh, commemorative issues, which is to say this, all the stuff that aren't the famous Machen heads, 
uh, when they put more interesting stuff on the stamps. I've got a decent collection of that because I happened to pick up a really good collection very cheap at a local club auction. The very first of the commemorative issues is this castle set here. Uh, sorry, sorry. The, uh, the what? It's a castle set. I'm sorry, I don't understand. Listeners, you've hit on a major fault line in Australian society here. And this household, to be and, perfectly honest. And this household. I grew up saying castle. I think if you say castle, you're posh. You're Victorian. But I'm Victorian. And you say it wrong. Well, we're going to have to devolve this into an entire other podcast, I think. <laughs> so would you say that a lot of these stamps are quite connected to history, culture, wildlife. I mean, we're looking at the moment at, uh, at some animals from the country where I've seen some churches, some stained glass. It's a very leading question. <laughs> well, feel free to disagree. What do you reckon? No, no, that's so absolutely paint, true. Paint us some word pictures. I'm looking at Winnie the Pooh right now. That's fairly British to me. There's Roland Hill. He invented the postal system. Oh, there you go. That I, I wouldn't have been able to tell you. There's a big train. I think it's a circus train. That's a British cricketer. There's the Queen Mother. There's oh. the 12 Days of Christmas there. Of course, a famous English Christmas carol. Oh, Charles and Diana. There's Charles Darwin. Charles Darwin. Okay. They're all really beautiful images and the way that you have them displayed uh, is gorgeous. That yeah. makes a big difference. It's actually quite nice to leaf through somebody's collection when they've actually cared for it. That's nice of you to say so. Okay. I like to use stock sheets, which are black sheets. They're single pages and you can just move them around according to whatever you need, whatever stamps you've just bought. Mm -hmm. And I put them all in an album. So as you can see, the British stamps throughout history of, well, throughout the 20th century at least, throughout the reign of Queen Elizabeth, uh, always quite strongly connected to British culture, history, uh, more of the same. There's ladybugs, there's steam trains, there are some famous actors that we're looking at just at the moment. Yeah. There's scientific breakthroughs, lots of colour. So is this a particularly British thing that the stamps from that country or that region are very much tied to culture? Um, is that a, a typical thing or is that a British thing? No, that's a, a typical thing from most countries mm -hmm. where they will put stuff from that country on their stamps. And the exception sort of goes in the other direction where there are some countries or people who put, put out stamps on behalf of some countries where they would just put whatever stuff they think will sell. Like you get African countries with Disneyland characters on them or whatever. In the 80s, there were heaps of Princess Diana stamps. You've paused at a stamp here. Who have we got there, Celeste? I, I'm completely distracted by a stamp of Fergie and Prince Andrew. That's awkward. Yeah. It's a particularly 80s looking stamp. It's the colours. It's the it's the pastel yellow on Andrew there. And the red hair on Fergie. There's a lot of red hair. And the grey curtains in the background. <laughs> and I can see the silhouette of, um, of the Queen that... I, you were talking about i think at some point they tried to talk her out of it but she insisted that she has to appear on the stamps in some form good on her and it's facing different ways on different stamps is that just to match the um image on the stamp does it matter which way her head is facing no i don't think that's significant i think they just work that into the, the design whichever okay. way happens to to suit the stamp so you can you can get a sense of what one of these Elizabethan collectors would have in their collection, and it's it's colourful and it's very much beautiful. It's very tied into into the UK. Now, can I show you Celeste one of the latest sets of stamps that British collectors would have had to go and buy if they want the full set of Absolutely. Elizabethan stamps? Let's have a look. <laughs> My friend Chris is going to love these ones. What are we looking at, Celeste? <laughs> Iron Maiden stamps. <laughs> they look great. They're crazy um, and not very royal. <laughs> no, so Iron Maiden is, if you are not aware of this, a heavy metal band from Britain. Mm -hmm. So there's that. But they have a, I don't know, do you call him a mascot? Eddie, who is a skeletal figure who appears on all of their album covers and a lot of their imagery. Yeah. And so they've just recently released a set of Iron Maiden stamps depicting Eddie in various very warlike poses, it has to be said. It's it's quite violent imagery. And they've released eight stamps featuring the band in concert. Now, this is something they've been doing for the last oh, 10 years or so. We've seen the Beatles, we've seen Rolling Stones, we've seen Pink Floyd. And this is 
the sort of stuff that has got collectors hackles up because every time they put out one of these you have to go and buy 10 or 12 stamps like do you really need to see eight different photographs of iron maiden in concert you don't and also they don't even need to put out that many stamps for the postal system they're just milking collectors they're treating collectors as a cash cow they know that they're going to go and buy whatever they put out and so they churn out these huge numbers of stamps okay are we getting a bit political here Yeah, well, I'm certainly getting passionate, aren't I? (laughs) Uh, But of course, another reason they're doing that is because they would be hoping that people who don't usually collect stamps are going to go out and buy these stamps. If I was a big Iron Maiden fan, I might might buy them. Yeah. Now, of course, right across the world, post offices, mail systems are Mm -hmm. struggling to make money because we don't send letters anymore. We write emails, we make podcasts. (laughs) (laughs) Again, another reason to question this entire hobby. Yeah, probably, and that's probably a whole other issue too. Yeah. And we've already noticed, by the way, that in our first few episodes, we didn't even tell you where to send us a letter. No, and... but don't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do, and put really nice stamps on it. Yes. Uh, look, I'm a little uncomfortable putting my, my actual mail address out there on a YouTube video, but uh, I've given you links to some of the other stuff that I'm involved with, and you can find it. But anyway, so post offices have been trying to find ways to make more money. And one of the ways they've been doing it, doing that is to put out more commercially oriented, a lot more pop culture stamps. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, here in Australia, every time we win a cricket match, they'll put the cricket team on a stamp because oh, they think rings. it might sell. So um, I'm, you know what's really heartening me is the way that you keep going through more of the stamp album. I'm... It's really pretty. Um, it doesn't make too much sense to me yet because... They're just images that don't necessarily mean too much to me. And you, Jared, you're a bit of a, a history buff, so you understand the content a lot more than I do. Also, you've got a good 10 years on me. But apart from that, I can still appreciate that these are, these are beautiful and they're displayed really quite lovely. If you uh, keep leafing through, I think you'll come to one particular um, item that I think you're going to find personally interesting, but we'll we'll see. We'll cross that bridge when we come to it. <laughs> so, so let's let's say you're perhaps an older collector. I hate to suggest that all stamp collectors are old, but um, there's a fair few of them. And let's say you've been following the Queen Elizabeth stamps throughout the career. You're just waiting for that little Queen Elizabeth silhouette to disappear so you can stop collecting. You've just been forced to go down to the post office and buy twelve Iron Maiden stamps. And you think, when's it going to end? Well, do you want to have a look at what came out next? Yeah, sure do. Uh, it's a block of X-Men stamps. They put the X-Men on stamps. It's more pop culture. And I don't know if the old men would be too thrilled about that either. So they're still collecting these stamps, even if they're not relevant to the Queen. They're collecting every stamp yep in her reign that's right and as long as that little silhouette appears in the top corner it's still an elizabethan stamp yes well these are quite hilarious with their images and with the queen's head in the corner it just it doesn't make any sense it is funny when you put when you say i mean just seeing the queen's head in the corner of these iron maiden stamps is pretty hilarious yeah imagine juxtaposing eddie with the queen on your (laughs) national stamps um and i should say for the record these are great, colourful stamps. Yeah. I actually think, in a lot of cases, album art makes for wonderful stamps. And so, I think that this would really get kids in because they're cartoonish and colourful and, and bright. Um, if I walked past that and I liked X-Men when I was a kid, I'd probably ask Mum to buy them for me or Dad. Yeah, and so yeah. that's that's the idea. Like, I mean, stamps can't just appeal to the, the old men of stamp collecting. And as I said, they're not all old men, but particularly when we're talking British Commonwealth, they're out there. Of course, there aren't too many more issues now that will retain the Queen's little silhouette because we are going to get some new King stamps. Shall we have a look at the King stamps? Yeah, of course. There you go. Oh, look at him. That's King Charles on his first stamp. And I have to comment that the the stamp image is very age appropriate. It really does look like King Charles as he is now. I thought they might have prettied it up a little bit. Yeah, it's really interesting because they sometimes suggested to Queen Elizabeth that maybe they could, you know, age the image a little bit in connection with the fact that she was getting real old mm-hmm. and she wouldn't let them do it. She liked seeing the her young her, her young self on those stands. Who wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I really like the um, the age appropriate king charles it's based on the same uh, design that was made for the british coins 
And when the coins came out, some people have complained about the prominence of his ear. Have you seen your king? I mean, it, it's they're just his ears. What It would be probably more insulting to artificially shrink the size of his ear and then have him not look like himself. Absolutely. That is the most recognisable part of the entire stamp. <laughs> yeah, you know who you're looking at, don't you? <laughs> totally. So I've noticed on the stamps that we're looking at now that some of them say first and some of them say second on them. Yep. What does that mean? They're mail rates that apply in the UK. So that's first class and second class mail. So right. it depends how fast you want your mail delivered. Mm -hmm. And the idea of those stamps saying first and second is that even when the cost of mail goes up, those stamps are still valid for one letter. Cheeky. Yeah, because in our country we don't have that. What we have is denominated stamps, and when the price of postage goes up, you have to go to the post office and buy extra stamps to, <laughs> to keep sending your mail. So a lot of countries do this. Um, they, they have these denominations that once you've bought that stamp, you're entitled to send that letter, even if the price of postage goes up. In America, the stamps say forever with these kind of stamps and um literally the word forever yeah, it says forever wow. and and it always seems to me like it's someone selling a fragrance <laughs> like especially on a stamp where it's honoring somebody let's say nancy reagan forever <laughs> now i don't know if you know this a little bit of uh, trivia for you is that when a monarch changes they usually change the way the monarch faces on the coins but they don't do it on the stamps because you can see Charles and Elizabeth facing the same uh, direction. And you can see some of the older monarchs too. There's George VI, Elizabeth's father, or as you would know him, uh, King Colin Firth. And uh, so he's obviously facing left as well. And that, he didn't have too many stamps, but that's uh, that was the King Guy Pearce. <laughs> Edward VIII. Oh, so he got a stamp in his short time. Yeah, he was around long enough to just get a couple of stamps, even though he hadn't actually gone through the coronation yet. Good on you, but, Guy Pearce. <laughs> So then they all face left. And the reason for that is that they like them to be actually looking into the letter. Right. So, so it's not like a political statement or anything. No, no, it's not. <laughs> because they'd probably be facing the other direction. But, <laughs> but yeah, it's, it's so that they're actually looking at it. Because you know what? Charles wants to see where you live. I suppose if they turned him the other way, it looks like he's turned his back on his subjects. It does look a, a bit snobbish. And you know what's a problem about that too is that it, it leaves him very exposed to an attack from Prince Harry. <laughs> also, his ear is bigger on that side. Uh, <laughs> Can I keep going through your stamp book? Because yeah. you said there was something here that I was going to get excited about. I'm just enjoying the novelty of you <laughs> giving taking a... an enthusiastic interest in my stamp collection. I didn't finish that sentence. Um. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yes. There it is. Very what are we found? happy. Oh, what have we found, Celeste? We found some Doctor Who stamps. <laughs> oh, look at that. David Tennant, Matt Smith. Oh. Celeste is a big Doctor Who fan. Oh, that's where it stops, at Matt Smith. Well, that's when it came out. Okay. That's, when, that's when the set came out. I think I can deal with that, I guess. But I reckon that the uh, probably the Royal Mail, uh, they can't they're can't onto wait. it. Yeah, they know Peter Capaldi's coming. Jodie Whittaker. Yeah. Once we get David to Tennant again. <laughs> yeah. I know it's really unusual for someone who's doing a podcast to be into Doctor Who, but, um, <laughs> but there we go. And in fact, just as a bonus, you've also hit on some other pop culture UK Star stamps. Wars. I think your boyfriend Mark Hamill was on one of them. <laughs> Um, and here we are back at the Queen's head. Yeah, at the back of my album are all the Machen heads. There are all these tiny little notations. It depends on where the, um, the helicon strips are, which help to uh, uh, speed look, the mail through the post. We're going to need the deep nerd sound effect if oh, you yeah. keep going, so just stop Yeah, right I'll there. bail. Yep. Suffice to say, when you line up all those Queen head stamps with all the different colours and all the different shades, they can look quite pretty. It's pretty. It <laughs> is pretty. Um, and that could be as good a reason as any to perhaps collect this particular stamp. The co yeah, the colours themselves. Don't get cocky. Well, it's a small victory. <laughs> <laughs> he, just, he just gave me victory arms, if you can't see. I don't know if it's worth that. But. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for this journey down uh, recent British history. And, you know, I guess good luck to King Charles. Hopefully he makes as pretty a stamp as the Queen. <laughs> That's right. 
And uh, well, perhaps what what was she around for about eighty years? How long did she reign for? I think seventy. Was seventy 70. years. Well, let's yeah, let's see if we get seventy years worth of stamps out of King Charles. So. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> I'd like to say that. You can get in touch with us at my blog, punkphilatelist.com, or via the social media handles, punkphilatelist at Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. Or if you want to email us, which is so much cooler than sending mail, <laughs> you can email us at stampsaren'tcool at gmail.com. Don't forget to lose the apostrophe. <laughs> We have recorded the first few podcasts ahead of putting them online. So if you have given us any feedback on the first few episodes, don't expect us to mention it immediately, but we will get around to you. And I'm Unless sure it's we'll... a complaint, in which case we'll ignore it completely. That's right. So, uh, so keep listening and stay tuned. They mean the same thing, don't they? Cue the music. <laughs> <laughs> Teeth check. Yellow. <laughs> Was there anything else we we're going to address? I'm just having a moment. I want to address the snot coming out of my nose. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>